Heart of the Lion Ministries. This is Evangelist Christian back with you again. I have an exciting message with you as I have uh, started uh, speaking and teaching on Babylon. I, I'm not surprised, but I was not aware that it was actually going to lead me into the rabbit hole of exposing how the works of darkness, uh, the occult and witchcraft actually operate. So I have actually uh, named, uh, entitled this message, The Fall of Babylon Part 2, Exposing the Operations of Witchcraft. And because I want to make this effective and, uh, and uh, um, time effective, actually, uh, I'm going to get right going into the message and confirm what we spoke about in the first part or the first video that I did last week. I'm not going to speak everything and mention everything, but I'm just going to do a brief uh, recap on that. That we, we mentioned what Babylon is and how Babylon and the beast are under Satan's control, but they're two different identities and they're destroyed at different times. We've confirmed that Babylon is a very uh, spiritually, but yet also the spiritual bleeds into the physical, physical uh, spirit and spiritually sexually perverted entity. As we look at Babylon, even if you just look at pictures you've Googled, we see the prostitute is riding on the beast. We see what what can we gather from that? Just in the just the the, the just the um, basics, surface level. Babylon is about pleasure, about um, you know, look at me, about visuals, uh, about uh, you know, grammar or, or glamour. There's nothing wrong with looking nice and you know hygienic, but it's all about the flesh and the lust of the flesh and getting people to focus on the outer shell versus the inner heart and being conformed in the image of Christ. And so we have that down. That's what I spoke about in the first video. And we know because of Scripture, not just but what I think, but because Scripture is clear that the beast actually gets permission eventually when the cup of sin is full enough, God steps out of the way and the beast betrays the prostitute, the harlot. And the reason why I'm just guessing, because I just mentioned what Babylon is, very perverted into sexuality. I mentioned pornography. We are the, the United States is the you know number one provider of the globe of pornography. But in my opinion, the beast gets tired of the overweight, luxurious, pamperous Babylon in its view, thinking it is just no longer uh, worthy or in shape to do the work of end time army for Satan. Because the devil, even though he's deceived, he's still going to try to fight. And anyhow, this betrayal takes place and they are eventually destroyed. And this is why God says to come out of her. So, what I want to emphasize on part two, which I am going to read in Ezekiel and Revelation, and it was really a continuation of Revelation 18, but it's confirmed in the Old Testament and the New Testament at the same time, is the operations of witchcraft. So, in Ezekiel chapter 13 and Revelation 18, we can read that not only is witchcraft exposed, and I'm going I'm to read the scriptures here in a second, but it's also exposing false prophets at the same time. And it gives an insight of not only that it exists, it gives a, actually a clear insight of how it operates. And it's a little different than most people realize because most people, if they acknowledge it, that it exists and it, and it does, is that witchcraft does bad things and it has a supernatural bent to it. And that that is true. But like we're going to confirm, most witchcraft or much witchcraft is not just doing evil. It's actually an ability to steal from other people's destiny scroll and use it as their own because they haven't they haven't chosen to repent and turn to Christ and allow God to manifest his blessings and promises that they have in their own scroll. They've just, because of envy and jealousy, just like Satan fell, thinking he deserved Christ's position because Christ existed before he came to the earth as the Son, 
uh, just like through that envy, they do the same thing through witchcraft. So let's go ahead and get right into the word where I want to show you not just the witchcraft exists, I hope you're there already, but how it exists. And then further, we're going to get that, that you have the weapons to reverse that through the cross of Calvary in the, in the shed blood. But it will actually, hopefully with understanding and revelation, it will awaken a righteous anger and indignation to ask God to destroy what he destroyed at the cross of Calvary through witchcraft and through your life and through other people's lives. So this is where the revelation is. This is Ezekiel chapter 17, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 13, verses 17 through 23. And Ezekiel existed uh, basically around 500 BC before Christ in the exile of, of Israel once again rebelling from God. He is a prophet, and this is what God says to him. It says, verse 17, Now, up to this point, God is rebuking, because I'm not going to read the whole chapter because of time restraints. God is rebuking. This is a rebuke, not to the heathen. This is a rebuke to prophets and false prophets that have turned into divination and witchcraft. This is a rebuke to corruption in the church. He's not rebuking evil people over there like, say, Nineveh, which God does that. This is not that. He is rebuking the church and the corruption for allowing witchcraft, divination, and compromise to substitute their Holy Spirit discernment. Now they're looking into divination and using different things, and they're prophesying wrong things. They're prophesying all is going to be well when judgment is right at the door to destroy them because of rebellion. So we pick up in verse 17. Likewise, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy against them. Like I said, they were prophesying the wrong things. And say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to you women who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive? And will you profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and keeping people alive who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies? So right here, we see a combo of not only false prophecy, but God is exposing magic. It's It sounds mystical. It sounds so mystical, probably most people will um, just run right over this and just be like, okay, that's magic and bad, and that's it. God is exposing how the black magic, how the witchcraft is operating. One half is false prophetic words that all is going to be well, so they don't need to repent of their sin. That's how false prophecy works. It eliminates sin. False prophecy minimizes sin because God knows um, Satan is counting on and hoping if he can't judge you that God will judge you for it. See, they, Satan is devious. He'll he'll try to, if he can't destroy you, he knows legalities. He'll try to get God to destroy you. So we have to be very, very uh, humble and careful and ask God what he is saying. So right here, besides the false prophetic word, God is showing how magic Black magic and soul trading operates. It's a sacrificial system where they're keeping themselves alive when they should be dead because of their rebellion, because they have stolen something from that person through witchcraft operations. Let me read that again. Say to them, woe to the women who sew magic charm. There was, you know, I have a feeling this is going to get into a third video explaining more in detail about the witchcraft. This video is to show you that the operations exist and how it takes place. And so um, I might do a third, I might not. But through these charms and these veils, there's demonic witchcrafts and demons attached to them that operate in a satanic 
illegal manner in the spirit realm. And through them, they're hunting the souls of my people and keeping themselves alive. And look what else. You, will you profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? So it's done not only to keep themselves alive, but per provision. They have decided to trust Satan in witchcraft for their blessings versus God. And it's through supernatural enchantments and rituals they're able to tap in to the spirit realm and pull out from other people's lives the blessings they're looking for because they don't want to ask God. And we're going to confirm this even more in the New Testament. The old and the new match, and it's even clearer in Revelation. And so Babylon is a system of usury. They're both satanic. The beast that the prostitute is riding are both satanic. They're both demonic. But Babylon has a flair and fingerprint, like I said, of sexual perversions and usury, slavery of other people that kind of took place like in the day of Pharaoh physically, but it's done in a supernatural way that then it does affect the physical, but you don't know what's going on. You're just walking around and you don't realize you've been stolen from. You're not fulfilling your destiny or people aren't. They're sick. They're not sure why. Just to give you a few examples. I want to back up a quick second. I mentioned that Babylon was perverted and something I want you to pray for. And this is all I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to lay it at the point of prayer. Because right now we're at a place we could see that people have been lying to us. Different fractions of the media have lied to us. And this is a perfect opportunity and point to interject this. I want the men and the women to really be praying uh, because we could see that Satan has made laws to be able to fornicate and kill children. Sacrificial system unto the devil. And be very, very careful about what birth controls you're using because it is very possible that there is lies behind this medications as well and these things, these uh, contraptions that actually kills the seed after conception within the womb as well, whether it's pill, morena, shot, wherever the, these other things are. Be praying at what I'm saying about the birth control because that's a spirit of murder that kills the seed and is even worse when there is conception. And it's no shock because Satan has formulated a way for people to fulfill their lusts without the responsibility by killing the child. What I'm trying to say is these birth controls are very likely, possibly, the same work in the same concept as abortion. It's just abortion, it's bigger. So please be praying about that because if that is the case, that is a spirit of death and murder and perversions as well with Babylon. So, anyhow, to get back right to my point, Babylon is a system of usury and slavery off of people's backs for their enjoyment, the elite's enjoyment, which is um, now taking place in a little bit easier way for them because of technology to watch their victims and to do what they do. So we see that their enchantments don't just involve lying, but a capability to steal from people to keep themselves alive and to get themselves blessings that were demonically earned. Let's go to Revelation now to confirm in the New Testament, which is 18. This is going to confirm what Ezekiel was saying almost to the T, but goes even further. Revelation 18, 9 through 13. And I already read a lot of the, you know, all of this in the first video. So if you watch the first video, this is going to actually continue on very nicely. But right now, I'm just going to continue in verse, uh, chapter 18, verse 9. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her, Babylon that is, will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. 
because God is releasing judgments on Babylon. And this is why he says to, to his church, not just the heathen, to his church to come out of this counterfeit system of perversions, uh, false Christianity, and government alliances. And so anyhow, as I continue in verse 10, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgments have come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of, listen, gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of ivory, object of ivory, every kind of object of precious wood, bronze, iron, marble, and cinnamon, and incense, and frankincense oil, a fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Here it even emphasizes and specifies that body and soul are two different entities and both are being traded. There is a supernatural witchcraft market that takes place in the spirit realm that trades the souls of men that eventually manifest in the physical because nothing happens in the physical realm unless it is taking place in the spirit realm. God made the spirit realm and God is a generous giver. Whether it's good or evil, whether you're using it for right or wrong, the spirit realm is in the nature of God. It's a giver. So whatever is planted there will manifest in a harvest in the, uh, the physical. But where witchcraft operations specialize, as I will get right back to the souls of men and bodies of men here to confirm, is why God hates it so much is it actually suspends, and God's allowed it, it messes with the will of God in the earth and in people's lives. It places themselves, witchcraft places itself as God in replacement of God to be God itself just like Lucifer, Satan fell through supernatural means, through supernatural rituals and enchantments. And let's get right back to the scripture again. We see Babylon is burning, has fallen. No one bought, the merchants of the earth don't buy from her anymore. And it says all these things, they're not going to buy anymore. And right at the end of verse 13, chapter 18, verse 13, and the bodies and the souls of men, it's confirming not only physical people, are held captive the spiritual souls of people are taking place in the markets in the in the super in the spirit realm where witchcraft illegally demonically let me let me read it a little more clear witchcraft is what i'm trying to say is i'm trying to expose its ability that it doesn't just do evil results and does evil things like I mentioned earlier. It demonically accesses the spirit realm to not only do these things, but to steal from people's destiny scroll because you have a scroll in heaven. You have a scroll that you're born with. And even though this might be difficult for you to believe, Satan is not all powerful at all. God is way more powerful, but we have no chance without him and without the sacrifice of his son and the, his Holy Spirit within us and the power of his blood, shed blood at the cross of Calvary. But demonically, witchcraft is able to meet, uh, to, to uh, peep into, pe into people's lives and to spiritually take from them and to use their blessings. That's what this is confirming. This isn't just me coming up with my own uh, interpretation. God is exposing through Ezekiel and Revelation that this is taking place. The souls of men are being bartered in the spirit witchcraft realm. And honestly, if you were to talk to some people who came out of witchcraft or some who are still in it, you would find out what I'm saying is 1,000% is true. And Ezekiel exposes a little more that what happens is that they're, they're stealing blessings. Here, it's confirmed that it's done once again in the New Testament and Revelation, but Ezekiel, it's saying, you're even doing it for barley and bread. Witchcraft has the ability to demonically 
wickedly, uh, illegally operate in the spirit realm to counteract the will of God for your life and other people's lives. This is why there is the sentence of death over it, just like murder and homosexuality in the Old Testament, because you are acting in place of God as God through, we haven't gotten too strong into that, I might explain that in another time or another video, I haven't decided on a third, through the rituals, through what Satan requires, and it gets pretty nasty. Uh, it could be anything from word curses to blood sacrifice. There's all types of levels of Luciferian, occultic witchcrafts, Freemasonry, Illuminati, secret societies, Babylon. This is Babylon. Illuminati, Freemasonry, witchcraft. This is Babylon. And they are into witchcrafts to get what they want according to... And that's why we see this huge push of the of you know the elite and these powers that are in control of being God and pressing an agenda because they think they're God and they want to be God, but they're in for a big surprise that they're not, and they're going to fall and they're all going to burn in hell if they don't repent and turn to Christ very very quickly. So that's what witchcraft is capable of, and that's what these two scriptures are exposing: that not only it exists. And not only does it do evil, but it has the ability to steal from people's blessings and scroll. Whether you're assigned to live to 100 years old or to be a millionaire or whatever it is, it takes from the maximum blessing through their demonic third eye. That's why they're very much into surveillance because Satan is not all omniscient. All this technology is not God. This is Satan trying to war against God in these end times. And that's why the, they're using the technology they, they, the way they do to peep and spy physically and spiritually. So I share that with you so you can understand that this is literally taking place. So you can be excited to learn spiritual warfare and to pray properly to counteract these things. Now, why is that important? Because obviously you could see that would be important for people that don't know Christ. But why is that important for Christians as well? Well, let me tell you something, if I can. It is dangerous for both believers and Christians alike because the devil is a legalist more than you know. And he knows the Bible, even though he twists it, he knows the Bible a lot better than a lot of people. He tempted Christ with it. So he knows how to twist things. So the point of the matter is the devil doesn't really need you in a lot of rebellion to activate stuff like this. He just needs a little door. He's a master legalist. Something you don't think is sin, or it can even be generational curses from your family that open the door. Christians can likewise be victims just like the unbelievers, even though we have the power to overcome that. And that's why I'm sharing this with you, so that you could get, have a righteous, godly anger to rise up and learn how to swing your spiritual sword to destroy these enchantments and send them right back to the senders, to the pits of hell where they belong. Satan is a master legalist and we're not going to be perfect, perfect, perfect until we're home. So it is very important we learn how to do spiritual warfare deliverance and to destroy these works of darkness that God worked in at the cross of Calvary. And there's a reason why spiritual, or there's a reason why witchcraft is so popular. The facts of the matter is that it, it works. Because see, Satan, Satan is a whore. He doesn't need much. Uh, he just wants your immediate obedience and he'll give you what you want because he wants to take you to hell. See, God is a gentleman. He's holy and he's righteous. He has way more power than Satan, but there is rules and conditions to come by. There's courage, there's respect, there's righteousness, there's honor. Satan has zero of those. He has appearances of them to bring people in, but that's not what he's about. So you don't really have to wait long to see Satan work these magics and witchcrafts for people because he wants people to bow down right away to him. And I'm not saying that to make people go and try it. I would not do that. If I were you, I'm just saying that's why it's so popular in the earth right now. 
Satan's first line. If you're a soldier for Christ, you need to know this. You need to study the enemy. Satan's first line of defense and army are the witches, wizards, and warlock and occultic agents because they know how to demonically, through rituals, tamper and alter realities, like I was mentioning with you, and not just alter realities, steal from people's lives and destinies in mysterious ways. People are going through tremendous stuff and they don't even know how it's happening. There is a good chance it's someone who's watching you. And Satan's first line of defense and army are his witches, wizards, warlocks, diviners, and occultic agents. It behooves you as a Christian to study the enemy and to learn how they operate to be a good soldier in the, in, in the army of the kingdom of heaven. Satan and his army are absolutely horrified and terrified of the church to learn spiritual warfare and to fight back in the potential and capability that they have. He has hidden that from the church. He has numbed that desire and hypnotized through his witchcrafts and emasculated that power of Elisha and uh, of, of uh, fire to birth forth from the church. He is terrified of that. It's time for the church to rise up and to not only learn the operations of the devil and witchcraft, but to do the works of God, to speak his works, which is, the Bible says in the gospel that he came to destroy the works of darkness. What he's worked in, we must work out through the proclaiming of the, the gospel. The, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. That, that's a, that is in part a prophetic word of prayer. We, we, we don't need to physically rise up, rise up because God is our vengeance. But that is a, prophet, a partially a prophetic picture of what prayer is. Those who are violent in prayer through warfare to destroy kingdoms and uh, of darkness, like God mentioned with Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, you're going to see great exploits. Satan doesn't want us to walk in this mantle of spiritual warfare, which judges his works that already took place and the cross of Calvary. You're just working out what Christ already worked in for you, which the Passover in Egypt and Israel was a huge picture of what was being accomplished because Christ is our Passover lamb. That's what you have access through his shed blood and his holy name. They are terrified of the church to learn spiritual warfare. Witchcraft is not only supernatural, it is a supernatural capability demonically to work against God's will and to steal from someone else's destiny scroll. Whether it's their health, whether it's their wealth, whether it's their calling. And not only do general evil, but to steal from people's lives. That's much of witchcraft, of what is happening. Let me give you an example. Someone dies early before their time. This is an example of their lives being sacrificed to Satan so someone else can live longer. Just an example, just a basic example. This is one of the operations of how the witchcraft is operating. Because of sin, maybe they didn't know Christ, maybe they did and there was a legality they didn't know, something they weren't aware of, however that works. When someone dies early from what was written in their scroll, that potential, what they were supposed to fulfill, that is a witchcraft sacrifice. That's a satanic sacrifice of some type and very likely a type of witchcraft because in Ezekiel it already told us you're staying alive when you should be there's people that are staying alive that should be gone and dead while others are dead that should be alive through their sorceries of false divination speaking falsehood but also their magic charms it was both so that's one example and so I hope this actually excites you to learn about spiritual warfare I will pray about a part three uh, with this but um, it's about the 30 minute mark that I, I want to end with and I pray that blessed you very much I pray that you would speak and ask God to help you to understand what was not only spoken but to rise up as a spiritual warrior for Christ that he has called you to be Heavenly Father I pray that this would um, be a blessing to your people that blindfolds would be taken away if they're wherever there may be and if there's not that an encouragement and excitement to do your work and to rise up as a spiritual warrior 
and to pray and decree the works of darkness to be destroyed into the atmosphere and into their lives, Father. I pray and decree, may all be blessed who watch this in Yahushua's mighty name. That is it for now. It has been wonderful sharing this word with you. Until next time, God bless you and your family. Take care. Thank you.